for revival in our own hearts and across the land. Anybody looking for a revival, lift up your voice and say amen. Lift up your voice and say amen. Anybody here looking for revival in our own hearts and across the land. Anybody looking for a revival, lift up your voice and say amen. Lift up your voice and say amen. Not from the government or any law Can't get it going by your own religion Only by the Spirit and the Word of God Only by the Spirit and the Word of God Come with me Come on with me yeah. Anybody looking for a whole revival In our own hearts and across the land Anybody looking for a revival Lift up your voice and Say amen, lift up your voice and say amen. You can work all you want, but you might not see it. Give all you got, but it can't be bought. Try everything, but you best believe it. It's only by the Spirit and the Word of God. Only by the Spirit and the Word of God. Come with me. Come on with me. Good morning. Uh, we'd like to welcome those in this uh, sanctuary today uh, to the service, and we'd also like to welcome those that are going to be watching it later on YouTube and those at Greencroft that will be viewing this also later. Uh, this morning, we invite you to join us as we experience the Word of God through music and lyric. Open our hearts and our minds to receive your gifts, Lord. It is written. Sing to God a new song. Sing praise from the ends of the earth. You who go down to the sea and all that's in it. You islands and you who live in them. Let the desert and its towns raise their voices. Let them give glory and praise to God. All my life, all I know, God's been good, good to my soul. Mountain high, valley low, I'm gonna sing wherever I go. All my life, all I know, God's been good, good to my soul.
Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels, numbering thousands upon thousands and 10,000 times 10,000. They encircled the throne and the living creatures and the elders. In a loud voice, they were saying, worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praise. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, to him who sits on the throne and to the lamb be praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever. The four living creatures said, amen, and the elders fell down and worshiped.
are and what you've done for us, Lord. Help us to continue to shine our light for you daily so that we can bring others closer to you, Lord. Help us give thanks and praise to glorify you. We ask all these things in your name, Lord. This is a fun one. We got to have you stand up on this one. You can even move around too. Dance.
same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your choose to live with gratitude for the love that fills my heart, the peace that rests within my spirit, and the voice of hope that says all things are possible. Lord, today and all days, we need to always remember that if you're with us, anything is possible. No matter what our struggles are, no what our pains, we know if we put our trust in you, Lord, you will overcome those, and you will help us through all those struggles. I just ask, Lord, that, that today you help each and every one of us here this morning to be able to lift that up to you and to always remember that. In your name I pray, amen. Okay, now we're going to bring a little culture into this service. <laughs> uh, this is a song by Bob Marley. Uh, he was a reggae artist. And uh, this has got a pretty powerful message. Come on, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
let them all pass all their dirty remarks. One love. The message that they really want to ask. One love. Is there a place for the homeless sinner who has all mankind to save his own? One love, one heart, let's get together and feel alright As it was in the beginning, one love, one heart Give thanks and praise to the Lord and we'll feel alright Let's get together and we'll feel alright Let's get together to fight this holy Armageddon. One love. So when the man comes, there will be no, no doom. One soul. Have pity on those whose chances grow thinner. There ain't no hiding place for the God of creation. One love, one heart. Let's get together and feel alright All the people are singing One love, one heart Give thanks and praise to the Lord And we'll feel alright One love, one heart Let's get together and feel alright children are saying one love one heart give thanks and praise to the Lord and we'll feel alright give thanks and praise to the Lord and we'll feel alright give thanks and praise to the Lord and we'll feel alright big breath. <laughs> this part came a lot quicker than I expected. So, <laughs> um, A couple weeks ago, Pastor Frank gave a sermon and he said words matter. And he talked about that quite a bit. And as I prepared for this, I thought, golly, you know, we used to say things up here. And if you remembered it after you got through Sunday school and dinner and everything else, it really didn't matter because you kind of processed what you heard and decided, eh, okay, I believe it, or I didn't, or whatever. Now it's recorded, and it's there <laughs> forever. <laughs> um, and that's good, and at the same time, that's kind of bad. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit. But I do have a question. This is going to be a little different, and this is just from my heart and as we go. Um, I just thought about writing everything down, and I thought, you know, that'd be cool. But that doesn't allow God to work in us as we go through this morning together. So I do have a question, and I would like an answer. This is kind of feedback type thing. Um, so the question is, what is one of the most used four-letter words? Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, okay, let me focus you down just a little bit. <laughs> Again, when you start getting the giggles, it's like uh, your mind's going where it shouldn't. In the Bible, what are one of the most used four-letter words? That's one of them. Yeah, well, I talked to you earlier. So <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, love is one of them, for sure. Fear is the other. Hope is another one. Um, I want to focus on fear a little bit. Um, when I, it's, it's interesting because when I started to look this stuff up and trying to figure it out, love is mentioned anywhere depending on which versions of the Bible, you know, from 300 to 
700 times. I mean, it just kind of depends on how you're pulling those words together. Fear is used anywhere in that same realm. Um, so there's a lot of talk about fear within the Bible, and there's a lot of talk about love. Um, one of the, what I, what I found, I found interesting was one of the um, things they say is how many times fear or fear not is used in the Bible. Anybody got a guess as to how many times that might be used? Fear not or, or fear? You've done some reading. One of the common things that has been preached about and talked about and shared about is that there are 365 different fear knots in the Bible. And I, somewhere in my searches I found there was one more verse that someone stuck in that made 366 for leap year. Okay, that makes <laughs> us feel good, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, like everything else in the world today, when you look at something and you say, is this true? As many people are that says, yeah, it's there, and I can go through all the scriptures and show you what they are, and there are others that say, no, that really isn't right, and it isn't in there that many times. And I assume that it makes a whole lot of difference as to which versions of the Bible you're using and how many words you include in that that focus around fear or fright or something. Um, King James seems to be the one they use a lot to say there's 365, and maybe there is. I don't know. Well, we can't come to an agreement on it, even those that know. And I find that kind of interesting because that's sort of the society we're in today. Um, it seems like no matter what we have out there, there's, whether we believe it or whether we are trying to discern it, there are those who will come up against us and say, no, that isn't right. That isn't true. Um, and this last year has been a lot of that, it felt like, uh, as we worked our way through something that none of us have had to process before. Others did, but we haven't had to do this. We haven't had to make choices that um, will help our fellow man. Um, fear is something that is used a lot. Um, each of us have it. Um, and I think it's mentioned in the Bible so many times because God knows that's part of our makeup, which is interesting because if we are made in God's image and likeness and, and he's part of us, does that mean that he has some fear? Some fear of what we're going to do? I don't know. Um, but it's an interesting thought for me as to how, um, how that fits into God's makeup for us. Uh, we've, we've come through a year where we've done some things that are uncomfortable for us. We've worn masks. We've stayed apart. We haven't been together. Now we're coming back together. Unfortunately, this week we're hearing things are getting kind of bad, depending on where you're at again. Um, I hope we can work together to solve that and move on from that. Um, fear is something that is used many different ways. I mean, we have it. I don't know what your fears are. Um, I'm sure you have something that you're afraid of. You know, is, is my spouse going to be here tomorrow morning when I wake up? Well, I have my job tomorrow. Well, will these people like me or won't they like me? Uh, and we go on and on with the list. Uh, and I have them. I mean, we all have them. I guess one of the things I am fearful of, and it doesn't control me, and it shouldn't control me, but it's there in the back of my mind, is are we getting it right as Christians? Uh, are we understanding? Are we any better than what we've seen coming through the Bible all the different times when there seemed to be a reset? Uh, my people still haven't got it, so we have to go and do this again and come back through, and then we ended up doing it again, and it just kept repeating itself. Are we better? Are we learning from those things? Um, and are we not going to let fear stop us from doing something new, doing something different, uh, reaching out in a new way, or if we're called to go do something that makes us uncomfortable, are we willing to step into those 
shoes and do that. One of the, one of the verses that I was reading, uh, and it kind of talks about this a little bit because uh, it's from Paul. So it's Paul as he's sharing to the Philippian church there. Um, he says, uh, therefore, if any encouragement is being from united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete, being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and one in mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself. Not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interest of others. In the relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ. And I've heard that a lot, and I've heard the comments around being of one mind. And sometimes I think that is misconstrued. Uh, mostly we think of that in saying, okay, we all have to think alike, we all have to work alike, we have to be alike. Um, and I don't think that's what Paul is really saying. Uh, because there are congregations, there are churches that reach people that some of us can't reach because we can't get into that zone and we can't be comfortable in doing that. So we have to rely on others to bring God's message to them and help them feel included. And this is what I think Paul was really saying in there. He said, this is my prayer. And a lot of times Paul shares the same type message with all the different churches as he, as he was trying to get around to them. And this is my prayer, that, you, that lo your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless from the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus and to the, to the glory and praise of God. So Paul's talking about knowledge and, and caring for each other and sharing with each other and being a part of community with each other. Uh, through this last year, we... Uh, there was a song that I started to hear quite a bit on the radio, and I, don't, I th think when I looked it up, it was only written two years ago. Uh, that's when it was first put out. And it spoke a lot to me because it tells me that uh, my fears are taken care of. Uh, and when I look at, at how that is, it's called, it talks about standing in, in your love. It's talking about God's love. And I had to think, what's that look like to stand in God's love. And one of the things, the only thing I could think of that really explained it from my perspective is, you know, as you look at Jesus' life and what he endured, um, he healed people. And he didn't have preconditions before he healed them. He healed the lepers, 10 of them. Only one of them came back and acknowledged God and, and give thanks, the rest of them went on with their life, and we assume healed because we never hear anymore. And others were healed uh, just by touching Jesus in various ways. We, we know the stories. And then as he walks through those last days, in the middle of chaos, as he's being taken away, he heals someone's ear who he's, who's taking him away. And as we follow on through, he asks for forgiveness from those who are doing this to him. And who did that to him? Well, the people, us, everyone. Uh, and he graciously took and opened the door for us to have eternal life. And he forgave a, a robber or someone who also was on the cross and suffered the same fate. Um, and that's a lot of love. In the middle of your pain and anguish, taking on stuff, uh, regardless of how uncomfortable you are or anything. That's just a lot of love that was shared down. And I guess, you know, for me, a test to see once if we've got it right and if we're getting it right is if Jesus was walking among us, would we recognize him? 
would he be pleased with the church and what it's doing and how it's reaching people and what it's going through? Um, I don't have that answer. Hopefully we are. Hopefully we've got it. And if we do, let's share it. Let's be out there and let's, uh, let's stand in God's love. Darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your I'm not afraid to leave my past behind Oh, I won't be shaken Oh, I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love
help us to always remember that fear does not stand a chance when we are standing in your love, in your light. Help us to take that power into the world. Spread that joy of knowing. Fear doesn't stand a chance. It can say it 365 times in the Bible, and it still does not stand a chance in your love. Guide us, Lord, to keep that light, that power with us, and spread that light, spread that joy. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, you're going to want to stay standing for the last two songs. Open his heart, open wide, from the depths, from the heights, I will bring a sad. hands lifted high, hear my song, hear my cry, I will bring a sacrifice, I will bring a sacrifice, I lay me down on God my own, I belong to you.
We'd like to thank everybody, this worship team that's been together for many, many years. Uh, I was just thinking about that as we were preparing for this. Uh, the core group. It's been a long time. It's been 20, 25 years. And it started all back with our pastor, Elder Greider. And we're so grateful, so grateful that we have each other. And we're so grateful that we can come before our congregation and share something that we love so much. We love God and we love being able to sing before him and to sing before you and to lead you every Sunday. So thank you so much for that. And, uh, and we're going to close with a song that we've done, started doing many years ago. <laughs> and you all will recognize it. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do that. So thank you so much for your attention this morning. And, and we're so blessed. And we hope you are too. Everybody has been blessed today. And as Kevin was giving his little sermonette about fear, and he said everybody has it. And I know people are going through a hard time, and all of a sudden it dawned to me, maybe we should have an anointing service. So as they close us, I guess I'll be here. Rain, would you join me up here? If anybody would like to be anointed during this last song, just please come up. Feel free. If you just want prayer, you don't need to say anything. We'll be glad to just anoint you as you all. Thank you. Thank you, Rodney.
Amen.